Hey, welcome back to my channel. If you watched my last video, you know I experimented with some 3D printed uh, hand pour molds for doing soft plastics. What I didn't show you that I've also been experimenting with is this 3D printed hand poured tube bait mold. Basically, I would fill this little section with plastisol and using this guide and this rod, I would just jam it in there while it was still uh, hot and that would form the tube. After that, I would take this out and stick the whole tube and everything in this and use these little, uh, this guide with all these little lines in it, I would use a razor blade to actually cut the skirt. This is what it looks like. It actually came out working pretty well, but it was way too labor intensive and that's not what this video is about. This video is going to be about two baits, but like I promised, we are going to do 3D printed injection molds. So let's go design one. All right, to create this uh, tube mold, we are going to be using Fusion 360 for the CAD work. Uh, this one's going to be a little bit different than the last video where I actually created the bait and then cut it out of a box to make the mold. This one, we're just going to start by making the actual mold. So first thing I'm going to do is start a sketch on my front plane here. And I'm just going to draw a rectangle. To do that, I am going to be using a center point rectangle. And my dimensions of my mold box are going to be about a 1.25 square by 4.5. So we'll start with that and finish sketch. I'm just going to extrude this out and seeing it's going to be 1.25 squared, we need 0.625 for that half. And then we're going to do another extrude on this half to 0.625, but we're going to do it as a new body. So basically that's going to be a left and right uh, mold. So we're going to rename this one left, rename this one right, and we can turn off the left side for now because we're only going to be working on the right at this point. So I'm going to start another sketch here, and we're going to start the outer diameter of the tube. So basically my tube is going to be about 0.5. And I'm going to take a line from the front because I want it to be 3.25 inches long. And I know I want that a quarter inch from the rear here. Then I'm going to come up 0.25. I'm just going to connect that. And I'm going to trim out everything I don't need here. I'm going to finish the sketch. And to cut that out, I'm going to use a revolve. So I'm going to select my profile, then access, and that's what it's going to cut out. But I need to turn on the left side of this mold so it cuts out both at the same time. And we can do that check by here. They're both cut. And when I turn that back off, there you go. There's the basic uh, shape of the outside of the tube. Next thing we're going to do is cut in for the injection port, and there's going to be an insert back here. So going to start another sketch and we're just going to rough that in with some lines so start down the center we're just going to rough in the basic shape for now it's going to go all the way to the back and we're going to set some constraints going to do this to the center Make sure these outsides are constrained. And now we're just going to set some dimensions. Now I know standard injection port is 5 eighths inch, so I'm going to go 64, which is a little bit bigger. My uh, runner here is going to be about 16, so 0.08. I'll just make this 0.5. Trim that off a little bit. And my insert back here is going to be 0.80, so do 0.4. Finish the sketch, and oh, this is going to be the same thing. We're going to use a revolve. Try that again. Revolve. Select my profile. Make sure it's got everything. Select my axis. And there we go. Got to turn on my left side body again, cut that out, 
And there we go. That's the basic shape of the outside diameter of everything. So now we got to make some alignment pins. So we're going to start another sketch. And we're just going to use some circles. So we're going to say 0.25. Put one back here. A little smaller, 0.195. Let's get some... Uh, try to center these up a little bit. Like to constrain everything with dimensions so I don't move anything accidentally. Looks pretty good. So the next thing I'm going to do is draw a little center line down here, and that's going to allow me to use the mirror tool. Select my objects, select my mirror line, finish sketch, and there we go. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to extrude cut these out. It's going to be a negative, so we want point negative 18. Just going how about negative point 18 going into the body. There we go. Uh, next thing I'm going to do is turn on my left side of my body, and I'm going to use that sketch. Turn off my uh, right side. Something happened here. Let's see here. I don't know where that went. Right. And using that uh, sketch, we're going to do another sketch. These are going to be a little bit smaller. I'm going to go 0.245. Just want them a little bit smaller so they're easier to insert. 1.93, say. Just going to center these up. There you go. And I'm going to use my mirror tool again. Select, select, mirror line. Same thing, we're going to extrude these. This time they're going to be out from the body. So point negative, I'll go out 15. I did that again. I always do that backwards. There we go. I can turn that sketch off. And next thing I like to do is just chamfer the edges of anything that's going to insert into something else. We'll do the front and rear too. Say 0.03. Turn my right side on. Do the same thing over here. Select all these. Get the chamfer, 0.03. And there we go. That's the basic outside diameter, everything that's going to get cut out of the mold, the pins, lock everything in place. And next thing we're going to do is make the insert that goes inside this to form the inner diameter of the tube. All right, to do the insert, we're going to start another sketch down the center here. And I'm using a 5 16th inch jig head, so I'm going to go 0.32, a little bit bigger. We're just going to constrain that to that. Come on down here, just going to rough this in. All right, I'm going to trim out what I don't need again, just like on the center part. Add some constraints. And then do some dimensions. So we know this is going to be 0.25. This is going to be, uh, we did 80, so we're going to do 79 just to make it a little smaller, so 0.395. It's the same thing here. All right, we're going to finish this sketch. Turn our sketches back on, and we're going to do a revolve just like before, but instead of cutting out, we're going to extrude it. And we're going to make sure this is a new body. And there we go. We're just going to change the color of this. Give me something to work with. Appearance. I'm already under paint. We're just going to grab this, drop it in there, and close. 
here we go there's my insert so far uh, we can turn off the right because we're gonna be working on this part for now okay we're gonna start a sketch on this surface and the outside diameter on my tube is 0.50 so that's what we're using here I'm gonna finish that sketch just like that we're gonna extrude what's going on here I'm gonna drag that out 0.05 we don't want to cut we want a join and that's just gonna give me a little bit of leeway from the bottom uh, so then we're gonna start a sketch on this surface zoom in a little bit again start with a circle and we're going to take some lines and this is actually going to form the skirt so do a couple of lines trim out these just center that up and after that we are going to use the circle pattern we're going to select these uh, do a center point here let's say 14 and then we're just going to trim out what we don't need here finish sketch and we're going to extrude these out say inch and a half and there we go that should form the little legs of the skirt One last thing I want to do on the bottom here is just start another sketch. Four. Just gonna, this is just making a little recess in case I have to actually use like a pair of pliers or something to hold on to this thing. So we're just gonna extrude, cut these out. And there we go, that's the finish insert. And we'll turn it back on a body here. And basically, that's the finished mold box and insert. So the plastic's gonna get injected in here, flow around there, hopefully fill in these little things, creating the skirt. And afterward, you just pull that out and peel the tube mold off the insert, and hopefully we have a finished bait. At this point, I'm going to send these three pieces over to the printer, and we're going to go from there. All right, before I actually get to printing this thing, I have to slice it up, and I am using Simplified 3D as usual. And for uh, print settings, I am using 25% infill on this. I'm using a 10-layer height, six top layers, uh, three bottom layers. That really doesn't matter. And then four outlines. I am using two different processes, and that's just so it prints faster. The bottom uh, first 30 layers are printed at a 0.30 layer height. And then once I get into the detail of the actual tube part, it goes to a 0.10 uh, layer height. And like I said, that just speeds things up. It's still going to be probably, uh, it says three and a half hours, but it's probably going to be closer to four. I am going to print the mold and the insert at two different times. Let me show you the insert settings. All right, for the insert, I am using, uh, let's see here, I'm using a 20 layer height, uh, three top layers, three bottom layers, and three outlines. And I'm using 80% infill on this just because I want it a little bit solid. Hopefully it'll keep from warping. But that's about it. Uh, I'm going to get these all ready to go, saved out, and shoot them over to the printer. Well, here's the finished printed tube bait mold. But first, I need a soft plastic injector. So I'm going to attempt to take this kitchen downspout, some aluminum bar stock, these O-rings, and make my own injector. So stay tuned.
All right, now that I got all my pieces and parts made, we are gonna start final assembly. I did do a couple of drilling and tapping operations off camera, but you didn't really need to see that because it's kind of boring. So first thing I'm gonna do is take my little uh, finished plunger here and screw it onto the rod. And I'm gonna take a little worm oil, just uh, lubricate my O-ring a bit. And that can get inserted into the tube. And I'm going to take my end cap. The Delrin uh, bushing I made is just press fit in. And this just gets inserted in there. And I line up the hole. And it's going to get secured with a button, 440 button head screw. Of course, now they got oil all over my hands. A little harder to do. And I made a 3D printed handle. It just gets inserted on also and it's cured with another 440 screw. A little stiff, but it should uh, should loosen up. And now onto the end cap, or the nozzle. Uh, this got drilled and tapped too, just for a, another 440 screw here. And what that's for is it's gonna lock into that little groove right there. Just keeps the end cap from popping off. I uh, did that on a mill, which I neglected to hit record, so you don't get to see that. Again, lube up my O-rings. And just pops on. It's probably gonna be a little stiff. There we go. There's my uh, finished worm injector. Gonna heat up some Plastisol and uh, give this thing a try. All right, this is the mold I'm gonna be trying to shoot. Basically, the insert sticks in, Plastisol shoots in from the top, and hopefully forms the legs and everything in one shot. So we're gonna clamp this thing up and see what happens. Just using these little uh, woodwork and clamps for now. I don't know if this mold's gonna work because this is the first time I'm trying this. But let me heat up my plastic cell and see what happens. All right, we're just gonna be testing this with some reheat, see what happens. A little pressure on that, I guess. I don't know, this is my first time doing an injection. Completely making a mess. Probably shot a whole bunch of air in there too, but we'll see what happens. All right, well, the injector seemed to work. Let's see if this uh, mold works. Damn, might have actually worked. Let's see if I can get this off there. Legs might need separating, but I think it actually worked. It's not too bad. I'm very happy with that. Body might be a little bit thin, but I can adjust the mold pretty easily. It's got some funky little detail from the mold but I don't think the fish care about that all right I'm gonna throw this in the bath for a bit let it cure up and go from there okay I'm gonna see if I can uh, repeat this process before I deem this successful Sector seems to be working okay. See if that O ring holds up. All right, give this one another couple minutes and see if the mold's working again. See how round two turned out.
Seems to be working pretty good, actually. Not too bad. I think I'm just going to make a couple adjustments and try to do a multi-cavity. All right, here we are. This is the six cavity mold. Uh, the design was basically the same, so I'm not going to get into that. This is actually round two because I printed this up and tried to run one. I did film it, but it's not worth watching because the mold actually melted. I screwed up the print settings on half of this, so I had a bunch of pinholes and all that, and I tried to fill them in with super glue, and well, Plastisol sticks to super glue really well. Go figure. So that one's garbage. I reprinted another one. I made the runner up the top a little smaller. Hopefully it'll uh, keep from warping, because this half did warp a little bit, but I put it on the heap out of the printer, and it flattened back out, so hopefully we're going to see what happens this time. Uh, the inserts, the first time around, I made them a little too long, and because they were a little close to the top. This one actually warped. You can't really see it, but I don't know why. The other ones were fine, so I redid some other ones, and I ran a stainless steel rod up the center of each one this time, so... And they're a lot shorter, so the head should be a lot thicker. But I'm going to get this all set up, clamped together. I'm actually going to clamp this between uh, two boards this time, so hopefully that helps. And I'm going to clamp it up in a vise this time. Just the added pressure. Hopefully it keeps everything together and warping. And we're going to see what happens. So let's go do that. All right, so here we go. Got some uh, plastic melted up. Just uh, random purple again with some uh, glitter. Trying to shoot it around 350. I don't want it too hot. And I'm just going to push this in there. Leave pressure for a little bit. All right. Going to let that uh, cure up and Hope for the best. Okay, here we go. Moment of truth. Look like anything melted this time at least. A little bit of flashing. I forgot to put warm oil on these. come out too bad I mean just a little bit of flashing sorry I bumped you guys all right I'm gonna get these other ones out of here and uh, see how they turned out It didn't turn out half bad. I'm going to see if I can repeat this. As you can see, I was able to duplicate the process. Uh, for a first uh, 3D printed injection mold, I think these came out pretty well. I did some purples. I did some silvers, some greens. This was actually like a dual color where I poured uh, purple into the injector and then green on top and shot it all at once. You can kind of see the blend. Didn't come out as uh, well as I thought, but not bad for a first try. I did shoot this mold about six or seven times and this is what I came out with. I had a couple of screw ups but that was just my lack of uh, injection uh, experience. But overall everything came out great. The mold held up pretty well for being just PLA plus. Uh, I mean I did get a little bit of warping on this half. This was the second piece I printed. I think I can just uh, throw that back on the heat bed like I did with the first one and it'll flatten back out. I think if I redid this, I would probably do this about an inch and a half, so the sides were a lot bigger. 
That way, if it did warp, it wouldn't affect uh, the edges of this because I did get a lot of flashing on the two edge pieces. But for PLA, I can't complain. And as far as my injector goes, uh, that worked out pretty well. Uh, the O-rings held up. I was a little worried they might uh, catch on the, the lock I put in there, but it did, uh, it did pretty well. So overall, I am very satisfied with how this came out, and I have some other ideas I'm going to try. So if you guys are interested in this stuff, uh, think about giving me a subscribe, and there will be more videos along this line. As always, thanks for watching.